This is the session for Algebra 2 Compound Inequalities. So today what we want to look at is representing a compound inequality using interval notation, solve compound inequalities, and give the solution set graphically and using interval notation. So here you can see um, the different types of notation that you're going to see as you're doing these problems or that you will be writing for these problems. We have an open interval, which is interpreted, interpreted as x less than b greater than a. Um, and that means that the endpoints are not included. So parentheses are used when the endpoints are not included in your solution. Um, and you don't want to confuse this with an ordered pair. Um, because with what we're, we're doing right now, um, this refers to interval notation. A closed interval would have the brackets. If you notice the difference between an open interval and a closed interval, a closed interval has the brackets. And if we compare these two right here, you can see that these have the equal to sign underneath the inequality signs. So you can see the difference between the two examples here. You have open circles um, on 1 and 5, and here you have closed circles on 1 and 5. Half open interval, um, there's two cases where um, the second point is closed and the first one's open, and then of course where the second one is open and the first one is closed. And you can see the differences between the notations. Bracket is used for closed, circles, and open circles, a parenthesis is used. Non-ending intervals, there are two types. Um, if your interval is going on to infinity in the positive direction, you're going to use the infinity symbol. If your interval is going to infinity in the negative direction, you're going to use the negative infinity symbol. And we always use parentheses um, with the infinity symbols. So if you would like to copy this down, you can pause it. All right, the first one we're going to look at is graph the conjunction inequality and write it using interval notation. t is greater than 1 and t is greater than 4. So and is a conjunction. And it, you're going to see and and or um, when you're doing these. And they both mean two different things. So we're going to talk about what and means as we do this problem. Let's first graph on the number line t greater than 1. So I'm going to put a 0 here on our number line. We'll put a 1 and we'll put a 4. So t greater than 1 means that I am going to be putting an open circle on 0, let me use a different color here, or I'm sorry, 1, putting an open circle on 1 and I'm going to the right. I want all the numbers that are greater than 1. So I'm going to the right to infinity. This is t greater than 1. And then t greater than 4 means that I will have an open circle on 4 and I will be moving to the right. Now, when your conjunction is AND, that means that your solution set for your graph will be where the two graphs overlap each other. So we want to look where do these two graphs overlap each other. Well, they start overlapping at 4 um, and continuing to infinity. So my final graph here for t greater than 1 and t greater than 4 will have an open circle on the 4 and we will be continuing to the right. So you are looking for where do my two graphs overlap each other when it, the conjunction is AND. So to write that with interval notation, it would be, and you may see your lesson may do X with the element symbol, and then this is starting at 4, so it's going and it has an open circle, so I'm going to use a parenthesis, and it's going to the right to infinity, so I'm going to use the infinity symbol. So that would be my interval notation for this compound inequality. All right, next, we're going to look at when we have or and what we do with that. Um, this is a disjunction inequality because of the or. 
and an or are both conjunctions in English. You may remember them from English. Um, but when it's or, we call it a disjunction. And when it's and, we call it a conjunction. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do D less than 6 on our number line. So we'll have an open circle again because it's a, just a less than without the equal to. And we want numbers less than 6, so we are moving to the left to infinity. And then for D less than or equal to 1. We will be doing an open, a closed circle on 1 because it's less than or equal to. And we are going left. So putting them together, D less than 6 or D less than or equal to 1, what we're looking for here when it's or is you're going to combine everything together. So you're going to put the two graphs together. And when we do that, we will have an open circle on 6. And we just need to show that we are moving right. And so when we move right, we are covering the 1. So we don't need to show that at all um, for this graph. So you're including both graphs together, um, which would be an open circle on 6 go, moving to the left. So you're going to negative infinity. So the interval notation would be negative infinity and 6 with a parenthesis also because it has an open circle. And we're going to look at two more problems, both where we actually have to solve this time. We're going to solve this inequality, 3x minus 9 less than or equal to 12 and 3x minus 9 greater than or equal to negative 3. And that's how you want to read this. You start with whatever is between the inequality signs. You read right and you read left. And this actually is an example of an and compound inequality when it's written in this form. So um, you can split it up and solve it as two separate inequalities, or you can solve it the way that it appears. Um, most people like to split it up. When you split it up, you have to be very careful that you're writing it correctly, though. It's 3x minus 9 less than or equal to 12. And 3x minus 9 greater than or equal to negative 3. So I've got to make sure that the inequality sign is opening towards the 3x minus 9 when I write this one on the left. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides to solve this. And that will give me 3x greater than or equal to 6. Divide both sides by 3, and I get x greater than or equal to 2. And then this one will be plus 9 on both sides. And I have 3x less than or equal to 21. So x is less than or equal to 7. So with and, you're bounded to where they overlap each other. And that's the case here. Um, x less than or equal to 2, or I'm sorry, greater than or equal to 2 would be numbers such as 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. All the numbers from 2 and to the right. x less than or equal to 7 would be numbers at 7 and moving to the left to infinity. So we want just where they're overlapping each other. So that would be between 2 and 7 is where they are overlapping. So I'm going to have closed circles on each because they both have the equal to sign with the inequality. And this is the area for my graph, for my solution set. And then if we want to write it with the interval notation, well, I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can write the solution. If we want to use set builder notation, um, we would write it as x in the middle, less than or equal to 7, greater than or equal to 2. With interval notation, it would be bracket 2, comma 7, bracket, because they have closed circles. So it's going to be brackets around each of them. So those are the, the notations that you'll, see it, that you'll see when you're doing these. And last but not least, we're going to do an OR. We're going to solve each of these. 
2x plus 3 less than 7, and 5, or 5x plus 5 greater than 25. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and that will give me 2x less than or equal to 4. And then we'll have x less than or equal, or I'm sorry, I keep saying less than or equal to, less than 2. Then subtract your 5 over here from both sides, and we get 5x greater than 20, and x is greater than 4. So x is less than 2, or x is greater than 4. So what does that look like on a number line? Let's do that, and then we'll write the notations. x less than 2, open circle, you want the numbers to the left x greater than 4, open circle, you want the numbers to the right. Uh, interval notation is a little bit different here than what, what we have looked at so far. The interval notation will be to, if, we, if you look at the first one, 2, you're looking at the numbers that are 2 and going to negative infinity. So we're going to have the negative infinity symbol, and we'll have the 2, parenthesis, and then for the 4, we'll have the 4, and we will have the infinity symbol. And we have to show that this is an OR, and the way that we do that is with what looks like a U. It means union. So you're putting the two together as a, as a solution set. So the way that you'll see the interval notation written is with a union symbol, the U symbol, um, to represent that you're putting the two together as one solution. And then last but not least, I do want to show one other thing very quickly just to refresh your memory. I may have showed it on a previous slide. However, I want to make sure we cover it again. If you have a problem such as 3x less than negative 3x less than or equal to 9, when you divide both sides by negative 3 to solve this, you need to remember that dividing by a negative which is the direction of the inequality sign? So it now becomes x greater than or equal to negative 3. So keep that in mind that if you do switch, um, you do need to switch the sign if you divide by a negative. And that ends this session on compound inequalities.